You may have a model that you would like to make slight changes to before you 3D print it, but you either aren't familiar with CAD or don't have time to fire up something like Fusion 360. Well, you could actually make slight changes to the shape of these models directly in Prusa Slicer using a tool called Merge. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at how to use this tool to merge two objects together to become one, subtract one object from another, and a few other editing techniques. So let's have a look. In Prusa Slicer, if you have two or more items on your print bed which are positioned so they're overlapping each other, if you then slice that bed, you're going to get an error in the bottom right hand side of the screen telling you you have conflicts in the G-code paths. What that means is that as this is being printed, it would be telling the printer to print in the same places twice. If we look down, you'll see that both objects are still being treated as individual items and therefore have their own set of outer perimeters and infill. This would obviously then cause a conflict in what needs to be printed. But we can absolutely work around this. So let's go back to 3D Editor View and then select both of the conflicting items, either by selecting one, holding Shift, and then selecting the other, pressing Control A on the keyboard, or selecting one, holding Shift, and then selecting the other in the object list on the right-hand side. Then right-click on one of the objects and select Merge. This will then nest all of the objects you had selected under a merged section in the object tab. With them now merged, if we were to slice again, we'll see that they're now being sliced as a single item. So if we move up through the layers, you can see that it's being treated as one. There was another warning there, but that was just a stability error because of the layout of the print. So we can now see that both the Benchy and the Kali Dragon are sharing walls and infill. Let's head back to the 3D editor view. Now, one of the first things that you might notice once you've merged items is if you click and drag them around the print bed, selecting one item will move both of them. But if you were to select one of the objects in the list on the right hand side, you can still move them independently. But if you either select them from the bed or the merged category on the right hand side, if you drag it around, it will drag around the entire merged collection. You're now able to right click on that merged category and add settings that are applied to everything within that merged subcategory. You can, however, still add specific settings to specific objects within that merged category. If at any point you decided you did not want them to be merged anymore with them selected, just go up and click split to objects. This will then remove the merged category and separate them into separate independent objects. For the sake of this video though, we do want them still merged, so we'll select all and re-merge them. If you right click on a specific merged object in the list on the right, there will be an option for change type. Under here, there will be five different options. The default that will automatically be set when you merge items is part, and as we've seen, this effectively means that these are parts of the same object. It's no different to right clicking on an object and clicking add part. They will then be merged into parts of the same item when sliced. The second option is negative volume, which means that any area of this object that you've set as negative volume that intersects with other parts of this merge will end up being deleted when sliced. So you can see here the area of the Kali Dragon that was intersecting with the Benchy when sliced was deleted. If we move the Kali Dragon and re-slice, it will be the area that it is now intersecting with. And you can see there that corner has been deleted. Again, this is basically the same as right clicking an object on the print bed and selecting add negative volume, then selecting a model to use. If you'd like to learn more about negative volumes or modifiers in Prusa Slicer, make sure you check out my videos on them that are already on my channel. The next part type is modifier, which allows you to apply specific settings to the modifier, which are then applied to any part of an object within the merge that intersects with this object. So without applying any settings to the Kali Dragon, if I was to slice it now, even though they're intersecting, you'll see that it has no impact on the Benchy, but the Dragon itself is not being printed. If I was to move the Dragon to intersect with the Benchy more, and then apply Fuzzy Skin to the Dragon, and then click OK, and then select the type of Fuzzy Skin, and I'll set it to Outer Surface, you'll see then that Fuzzy Skin is being added to the Benchy in the areas where it's intersecting with that Kali Dragon modifier, but is not being applied to any of the other areas of the Benchy. Okay, let's go back to 3D Edit View. With Fuzzy Skin selected, let's delete that so we're not applying the setting to the Kali Dragon anymore. 
and then we'll right click on the Cali Dragon and go back to part type. The next one is support blocker. So if we select that and click OK, this will then block any support material being generated by the auto support generator in the areas that the Cali Dragon is intersecting with the rest of the items in the merge. So let's slice it with auto supports turned on and you'll see the support material has been generated everywhere except the areas that the Cali Dragon was intersecting with the Benchy. Let's go back to 3D edit view and we'll change the part type one more time. If we right click and then go to change type, the last one is support enforcer. So leaving support material turned on, if we untick auto generate, it should only create support material in areas that we have painted support material on. But you can see here it is generating support material everywhere that the Kali Dragon is intersecting with the Benchy because it is a support enforcer. And then jumping back to 3D edit view one last time, if we change the type back to part, again, this is the default that it would be set to when you're creating a merge out of objects. So as we've seen, if you slice it with it set in part mode, it is going to merge it with the rest of the object and become part of the same object. And remember, if you ever change your mind, all you need to do is select the merge, go up to split two objects, and you'll be able to move them around and treat them independently again. Whilst you can use this feature to merge multiple objects which you've imported into Prusa Slicer, if you just had one object and you wanted to make a quick change to it, the easiest thing to do is to right click on the print plate, select add shape, and then choose a box, cylinder, or sphere. It will then add an object to the print bed of that shape and add it to the list of objects on the right hand side. You can then scale and position that object as you like, and then you're able to merge it with your imported objects and then use it in any way you see fit whether that's as a negative volume or an additive volume, etc. Well, I hope you found this video useful and you've learned how to make slight changes to the design of your models directly in Prusa Slicer. If you have, please make sure you hit the like and subscribe because not only does it make a big difference to me, it also means that I can continue making this sort of video for you. Until next time, thanks very much and happy printing. Thanks very much for sticking right to the end, guys. While you're here, why not check out some of my other videos? I've got tons of other Prusa Slicer tutorials, as well as loads of just fun 3D printing and maker tech content. Again, thanks very much, and until next time, happy printing.